Hi everyone. This video, we're going to talk about menu planning. What's for dinner? That's just the age old question. <laughs> and I struggle with it just as much as anyone else. And sometimes I get a little tired of the meals I've been having lately. So it's just a question where I sit there every week and think, okay, what am I going to come up with this week? And Sometimes it's helpful to have a little plan um, in mind, and so that's what we're going to talk about. Something that I've started doing, and I'm doing it in my planner, which is what I use, the Happy Planner. So, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I hope you'll join me. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, I want to welcome you. I hope you enjoy this video where you talk about everything related to eating a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. So stay tuned. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is a happy planner that I use. And in here, I like to organize by keeping track of the menu for the week. So here's my weekly spread uh, for October the 29th through November 4th. And on the left here is where I have my meal plan. And let me zoom in, you can see that a little bit closer. So we're gonna have leftovers on Monday, uh, oriental stir fry for Tuesday, pasta salad and baked beans for Wednesday. I have a really good pasta salad recipe. And the baked beans just adds a nice compliment. And I know we're in the latter part of October, and I still love my summer dishes, so I'm gonna have the pasta salad and baked beans. It makes me feel like we have a taste of summer. Then here I actually made a mistake, and I meant to put, this is my daughter-in-law, my new, brand new daughter-in-law, Lauren, and her birthday we are celebrating, it's already passed, but we're celebrating it on Friday night, and I inadvertently put it on the wrong day. So I just put a little arrow to show that rather than white it out. So actually for Thursday, we're gonna have mashed potatoes, gravy, and a salad, and probably some other green vegetable as well. And then we're going out for Lauren's birthday dinner on Friday night. Saturday night, I'm either going to make my homemade pizza, and I have found a fabulous um, way to make a nice, thin, crispy pizza crust. So watch for that in an upcoming video. Or we may get it uh, as takeout. And of course, the pizza that I make has no cheese on it. Well, it's a veggie pizza. And then on Sunday, uh, I have it written down as our night to dine out. So going from there, so you have a menu plan, right? This is what you're going to do. But coming up with what to eat every week can be a little challenging when you have a limited selection once you start going on a whole food plant-based diet. You know, years ago, or before I started this diet, two years ago almost, the way I would think about menu planning is I would separate it into the type of meat we would be having for that dish. And so then I would arrange it by beef, pork, chicken, uh, perhaps we might have a vegetarian meal, but rarely <laughs> did we. Uh, we ate out a lot, and that I've tried to curtail. But anyway, I would divide my recipes out by meat and decide so that I wouldn't be having beef, 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 hamburg, beef, you know, all in a row. That's the way I kind of separated out my thinking and planning for menus. Now, now that I'm whole food plant-based, now I do it by starch because whole starches have replaced my meats. It's, I follow the starch solution um, and what you're doing is making at least half of your plate, if not a little more, consist of a whole grain or whole starch item. And from there, you add in fruits and vegetables, whether they be cooked or fresh. But that's the, the starches are your main portion of the meal, where it used to be the main portion of my meal was some type of a meat. So therefore, I've decided make it easier for me and not have to reinvent the wheel each week, I decided in my Happy Planner, which I have Frankenplanned, let me bring this back out a little bit here for you. And Frankenplan, if you don't, if you're not familiar with that term and you're not in the planner community, it just means taking a planner and 
mixing it up a little bit, which is so easy to do with a happy planner by being able to remove the sheets. Um, mixing it up a little bit to comprise um, a planner that works for you, that goes along with your schedule, your situation, your family life. So what I've done is at the back of my planner, and this one, I don't know what it was originally called because I've relabeled it as menu ideas. Uh, so it's got a nice little quote that it makes so much sense on the front. One cannot think well, love well, sleep well, if no one, if, sorry, if one has not dined well. And isn't that the truth? I mean, our health is so important to every part of our life. And that's a quote by Virginia Woolf. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? All right. So here we have uh, on the inside of it a, a nice little reminder of setting a table, casual style or formal. So I thought that's a nice little handy uh, thing to have. So way I've divided this up is I've got headings for it and I got these extra pages that you can buy through the Happy Planner. And I've got it labeled as meals using pasta and I've just started to write down a few ideas here. Let me get that more in frame. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Uh, one is spaghetti with marinara and broccoli, or sometimes I use fresh mushrooms. Spaghetti and marinara sauce is nice, but if you're missing what you used to eat, like meatballs or meat or shrimp or whatever type of meat you used to have with your spaghetti, I like to replace something. When you take something away, it's good to have a replacement for it. So just to bulk up the volume a little bit and also because it's so good for you. I like to add broccoli. Oh. It's delicious with broccoli. Or in lieu of that, if I have fresh mushrooms, or sometimes both, but fresh mushrooms is a great replacement also for a meat alternative. Then I have a cold peanut noodle salad. Um, I have a, um, a video I did on how to make this that came out so good. Baked Penny Florentine, that's a recent recipe I got from Dr. McDougall's website, his newsletter that I get, and it turned out fabulously. My husband, who is not a um, on a whole food plant-based diet, he loved it. And then uh, pasta salad and the vegetarian baked beans. That's what I'm going to make uh, later on this week. Now the next page, I, I can add more pages. So as soon as I fill up this list on both sides and I have more pasta dishes that I want to remember that I have recipes for that I've tried and I love it, then I can just add more pages in. The next is meals using potatoes. So I, so far, I don't, I like potatoes a lot, but I don't use, find that I use potatoes a lot during the week. Um, I don't know why, but I do like potatoes. So one of the recipes or menu ideas I have is mashed potatoes, gravy, corn on the cob, and salad. Corn on the cob when we can get it in season. Um, another nice meal is making oven baked fries and a veggie burger and salad. And I still have more to list. Now, I just have started these pages, so they're very, very brief so far. My lists aren't complete by any means. Now, next we have meals using rice. I find that I eat a lot of rice uh, since I've gone whole food plant-based. I could probably just be born eating rice and, and be thoroughly happy. <laughs> but then I say that about everything I eat that I like. <laughs> so anyway, um, but rice is included often in two different um, uh, ethnic type of foods that we love, love to eat the Oriental um, Asian cooking as well as the uh, Mexican or um, Latin cooking. So uh, one of my um, excellent uh, meals is an Oriental stir fry. And you can make that either with rice or with um, lo mein noodles or even spaghetti pasta. That's good both ways. Burrito bowls, oh my gosh. Those are delicious and that's using rice Black bean burritos are, are wonderful, or uh, making them with refried, fat-free refried black beans, or any type of refried beans that are fat-free. Also, I make a really good crock pot veggie chili, and I love to serve it over rice. There's a lot of meals that I use with rice. And then my last category 
is really like a combo. It's meals using breads. So for instance, if I haven't had a lot of bread and the bread I eat, I try to have whole grain and as high a fiber content as possible while still making sure that there's no milk or egg in the bread. And I use, um, for my buns, I'll try to use whole grain, uh, highly, uh, as much fiber in the whole grain buns as possible. Uh, veggie burgers, so again, that's replaced, uh, repeated here, but as a second thought when you're trying to incorporate a meal using bread, um, here's my homemade pizza. Then veggie subs and soup. Now, when I have a veggie sub and a soup, I'll generally go for a lighter or creamy soup. But veggie subs, I just get a nice whole grain French bread and a break and um, open it up and put on a little bit of mustard and then pile it with vegetables. And at the very top, I add in some Italian seasoning um, and a little, I'm trying to stay away from salt. I really am. So if I don't have salt or I might have just a smidgen, but I'd, I've been trying to use like a table seasoning blend, something that would replace the salt or Everybody raves about Benson's Table Tasty. I've got to try that sometime as soon as I can find it. Or maybe I have to order it online. But anyway, so I, I pile it up with vegetables and then I drizzle on a little bit of red wine vinegar. So good. And then with that, if it's a dinner time uh, meal, we generally have some type of a light broth based or a light smooth creamy soup to go with it. But there's the whole idea of soup in a bread bowl. Oh yeah. So again, a small bread bowl and whole grain and as high fiber as possible. But there's where you can start to add in your heartier soups. So we have a soup and, and of course always have a salad with it and the bread. So it can, um, when I say this is a combo category, I'm listing the soups I like to make in here as well. Now the soups can sometimes be heavy with starch or if they don't have any starch in them, then I will combine it with the bread. But I have here listed enchilada black bean chili, a corn and potato chowder that we've tried, a really good pumpkin, creamy pumpkin soup. Oh, if you have not tried, and I'll link up um, in the video here, my uh, video that I made on how to make a creamy pumpkin soup. It is to die for. I'm going to have it all year round, not just at this time of year. And then a tomato soup and a lentil soup. So all of these are really good when you're having it combined with bread since that's why I have it listed in this category. Now there may be more categories I haven't thought of just yet. I haven't included like a breakfast category that might be nice to have. But when I do my menu planning, I'm mainly thinking of dinners. For lunches, I often have leftovers from the meal before. And for breakfasts, I keep it real simple and try to have oatmeal every day or some type of whole grain cereal that has perhaps some ground flaxseed in it. Very, very low in fat. Almost every um, grain has a little bit of fat in there, but I'm trying to keep my fat content very, very low. So when you get to the next week, Okay, so we're getting into November. And we go back to next week. Let me zoom out again. Okay. And however you plan, whether you plan in your phone, in the planner, uh, just a separate piece of paper, however you plan your meals, you've got a blank sheet in front of you. It really is helpful, I think anyway, to have a category or a list of menu ideas. There we go. That's so thank you so much for watching me today. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. You have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Bye for now.